Pardon my laughing ass girlfriend if y'all just happen to hear her upstairs. But I'm going to talk about this whole thing with Delicious and whoever this Mexican. I mean, why am I talking about whoever this Mexican is? Let me not downplay this brother, man. Jesus Christ, forgive me. <laughs> this is one of the Central Park Five brothers. I forgot. He ain't no brother brother, but, you know, he was part of the Central Park Five. Anyway, that's something I want to talk about real quick. And that's the disingenuous bullshit that you hear from the red pill, MGTO, SYSBM dudes. It's, it's disingenuous bull jive about a woman hitting the wall. Look, in the pro-black community, there's a female by the name. And because I'm an older guy, you know, in my upper 30s, um, I've been around this gender war for, man, 50 years there's nothing that, uh, you know about this thing that I don't know about um, you know they got this thing called the wall now I'm gonna tell it to you like this this is something that primarily it's a talking point that black men get from white men it it doesn't apply the same way it does have some significance don't get me wrong bro you can always take some type of celebrity example, like uh, what what what's that chick name? Um, the the chick from Girlfriends, Tracy Ellis Ross, and you know you could take an entitled female like her and her bitter situation, and you could say she's hit hit the wall. But let's keep it real. Just like I was about to say, it's just like in the pro black community. There's a female by the name of Irene Yvette. Irene Yvette left the pro-black community, went and got with a white dude. It didn't work out, made two babies and came right back to the black community at plus 30. If I'm not mistaken, she's plus 35 years old. She's around my age, if I'm not mistaken. I think she's between 34 and 38. And she didn't have a problem getting a man. Look at all these dusty, broke dudes out here, babe. Any woman is not, man, look, bruh, on the real. Let's keep it honest with us, man. If a woman got a butt, it just about makes her ageless. And see, we live in a very self-absorbed, self-centered world. Where guys tend to think that the whole world evolves around them. And you might see a female who's 47, got some gray hair in her head. And let's say she got a short ass fade. She ain't even got no long hair. She got a short, kinky little, I ain't going to say kinky, but a fade. And then it got grays all in it. And then she black as hell. And then she got a big old bell pepper nose. I've literally seen it, man. I've done seen 47 year old black woman with an ass and a shape bag. A dude, man, 10, 12, 15 years her junior with a job and maybe one kid, if not any. I've literally seen that, man. I've seen 47 year old black females with 32 and, and, and like 36 year old dudes, man. Like it ain't nothing. And she might have some kids that, that ain't even all the way grown. See, black women, sisters, they have an evolutionary strategy, bae. And it's just the reality that black men have to deal with. They ain't going to lift your ass too high. You know what I'm saying? It's like that whole thing about the mother is the first teacher of the child. She ain't teaching you shit. She ain't teaching you nothing. Some of them will. I've seen some very loving mothers who do raise their sons to put them on, you know, mama's exact same level of success or whatever. But a lot of women, man, please, they just let black boys fall by the wayside and they leave you to your complete carnal nature. Whoever can fight the hardest and get the most money can can get the booty and she can go out between her teenage years and her man. It, it depends on how she looks. I'm going to keep it real with you. It depends on how a black woman looks, but I'm going to keep it honest with you. A shape, especially and see a lot of black women develop a shape after they have the baby. See, that's part of what makes the single mother argument crazy because, see, there's all type of X factors that are not mentioned. 
whenever they say 70 percent of black women are single mothers and that the black women are the head of the household, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they leave out. Number one, what do those census numbers look like? Because I heard somewhere that 62 to 65 percent. I mean, if if we want to sit up here and do the stat, you know, the the incel, femcel, stat nerd thing. Hell, let let me give you some stat nerd things to consider. What percentage of them women have boyfriends that are living with them? And just like you, she don't view and just just like a micto, she don't think it's worth the paperwork. Not that the man ain't worth the commitment. She probably love him. But man, look, we're we're a couple. <laughs> I don't need to go down there and let no white folk know it. I right. if we decide to get us a house one day, we can sign a mutual agreement to this is what I'm going to pay and this is what you're going to pay. It's called a lease agreement. We can take it to a notary republic for five fucking dollars and have it stamped. If somebody goes in the wrong direction, if you start fucking another hoe and I decide to kick you out, guess what? I got your name on here. You sign this with me as the primary owner. So you got to go and you still owe me your half. <laughs> you can do that without a marriage. So how many women out there are living with a man? It just isn't officially and counted within her single mother statistics. That's a big factor. So only about a third of black women are totally living alone. And you have to consider black women that are older and by themselves who husbands have died, especially if her husband died in his 50s or early 60s. A woman can be alone by herself for 15, 20, in some cases, almost 30 years. There's some women who live to be in their upper 80s and in their 90s. If a woman lived to be 90, imagine if her husband dies at 66. That's 34 years. One third of her life, she's going to live by herself. And that's 34 years that she could pop up as a single mother statistically. Single mother of 10 children that she had between 1940 and 1970. Stats ain't always, this, this is why I say, don't be an incel, femcel, stat nerd. But this whole thing with delicious, let, let me actually get to the person, man. Man, you do, you need to stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. If they, they, Look here. You had, what's her name, Brittany Renner and, and, and Megan Good. What's her name, Megan Fox or Megan Good? Man, them women are, are making you millionaire Negroes look worthless. It's so easy to just hop up under a black man and get a baby. Delicious probably just can't have no baby. Oh, she probably could if she's in good health. 44 is not too old to have a baby. It's risky, but it's not too old. White women do it in their 50s all the time. But, uh, man, please, Brittany, I mean, uh, <laughs> Delicious could probably find her a basketball player, a NBA player. Oh, I bet you she can find her a businessman. Look at Kevin Samuels. He good by himself, but he, he's not good on them dates with uh, Brittany Renner and in interviews with Nicki Minaj. Very second Delicious come knocking at the Kevin Samuels type nigga, brother, sitting up somewhere at a cafe in Houston with them long legs and that light skin and that curly long hair she got. Man, please, it's a wrap. And then you got to keep in mind, she lost a lot of weight. She, she can get back thick and then get half the dudes, get, 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 get twice, twice the amount of dudes, black, like that chick Irene Yvette. So give me a break. Delicious ain't hitting no wall, and you Negroes, you brothers are not serious, man. Y'all just repeating a bunch of stuff that you hearing from these guys, because instead of getting out there and living life, you sitting your ass in front of this computer all day. Log your ass off of this computer within the next hour and get out there and do something, dude. You know, these incels online and these fem cells are going to drive you nuts, man. And they're going to convince you to sit up and waste a whole bunch of your life sitting up online arguing with a whole bunch of people who have developed over the course of five, ten years 
a bunch of pre-structured arguments that are just repetitive. I mean, it's the same old repetitive uh, bringing up the same statistics and living by statistics. That shit is lame, bro. I'm out.